Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. Fourteen ninety WGCH. This is Carrie Lutz. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network. If you're wondering what's going on with this motley crew of Republican candidates, who's really ahead on the delegates, and is there any hope? Bix Weir, a regular on the show, is with me now to give you the straight inside scoop on who's really winning. Bix, how are you? I'm doing well, Carrie. I'm I'm watching our our man pile up the delegates. Yeah, and. How is it? How exactly is he? Is he doing it? Because from what you've said and from what I've read, it looks like he might actually be in the lead. He is in the lead, and and the the thing that people don't understand is there's at these caucuses uh, you, first there's a popular vote, and then most of the Romney and Santorum and Gingrich crowd goes home after that, and then they get down to the the party business of electing a delegate and. The Ron Paul guys are hanging in there and and gaining gaining the delegate count by just sticking around and and being appointed. That's incredible, and I'm so shocked that the mainstream media hasn't uh, shared any of this with us. Well, actually, just a couple of days ago, Rachel Maddow did a uh, did a kind of a special report on it, and it was the first that the ma- mainstream media had had talked about it and you know it's because the ron the ron paul leadership is telling the world this is what they're doing you know they don't want any surprises and it's it's not illegal they're just more committed than these other delegates Mm -hmm. so it's an enthusiasm it's as if you uh you have two uh people you're going out with and one is gorgeous and just incredible and the other is brilliant and average looking and you're really excited about the uh, the one that's average looking but brilliant and you just don't have the heart to break it to the others although that's a bad analogy because there's no gorgeous candidates in this race huh <laughs> i i think ron paul is pretty good looking if you ask me. <laughs> he's looking better all the time isn't he <laughs> he is and and i i talked about this in an article i wrote that the uh, this is the plan of what I call the good guys to get Ron Paul in office at the exact time that we need him because you know, we are on the brink of a financial collapse and there's no other candidate except Ron Paul who has warned everybody and has a plan to get out of it. Yeah, and some people think that we could suffer another catastrophic president of which we've had God knows how many out of the last however many but really, we're at the end of the road. Somebody has to stop the bleeding or we're kind of finished, right? This is the last chance for the United States to, to you know, put their pants back on and, and get back into the game of liberty and justice and, and being the country that we were living the, the principles that we were founded upon. So you really think it's our last uh, grasp to survive or maintain greatness? It is, and and there are people working behind the scenes to return us to that type of of country. Um, it, it won't be pretty. You know, they're going to have to crash the monetary system and get rid of all the the excess debt out there um, and all the uh, electronic and paper you know, assets as, as people call them these days. You know, the funny thing about electronic assets, they haven't been with us all that long, you know, since probably the early eighties is when you know, everything went on to computers and, you know, everybody laughs about those uh, people who believed in the tulip bubble. Well, what do you think people are going to look back at this time when we believe that little electronic blips were, were had value? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's uh, going to be one for the books. You know that. And you know that really we're at the end of the merry-go-round here. The uh, the motor is grinding up, seizing up, and everybody's going to get thrown from the horses. So they better get ready, right? Oh, yeah. But, it, you know, it's happened time and time again throughout monetary history that unbacked fiat currencies have collapsed. As a matter of fact, we're living through the longest um, unbacked currency in the history of the world. And, and, you know, it started in 71, we went off the gold standard, and it's been going on through the, 
you know, the only reason it was allowed to go on is that computers rig the markets every day to keep everything kind of under control, and they run that out of the Fed New York and out of the Treasury. So, you know, it, it's lasted a long time without any backing, but now is the time we've sucked up all the benefits of fiat money, building infrastructure, roads, houses, building our military. Now it's time to crash the system and go back to a more safe and sound monetary system. And there's really no other alternative, is there? No, yeah, it was interesting. I was I was uh, listening to somebody on on the TV saying that uh, not one country has ever paid off their debt <laughs> in the history of. <laughs> and, you know, it's always a default. Nobody pays off debt, especially in an electronic form these days. It's always a default. Yeah, yeah. Well, that shouldn't come as a real surprise because I know Martin Armstrong. He was writing a book uh, about the history of government defaults. And he was only up to around the uh, mid 1500s when uh, the book was already a thousand pages long. And it's not even like getting close to the uh, 16, 1700s, 1800s, and 1900s where defaults really took off. So there should be some type of law against governmental debt because it just leads to such ills. And then eventually the party is over. And everything blows up and everyone's shaking their heads saying, oh, we're never going to do this again. We're never going to do it again. And then no sooner do they get pick themselves up, dust themselves off, they're doing it again, right? People by nature don't learn from history. And it's it's a sad, sad thing. And, you know, you got to go through the pain of of not being smart enough to recognize the problem beforehand. And, and Ron Paul has been warning the world about this for you know since the 70s and you know the funny thing is you know ron paul's been wrong if you, if you think about it he's been wrong since 19 you know, the mid 1970s saying that you you cannot live off credit and debt it's been wrong all the way up to the point when he's right and the point when he's right is coming and it's going to be such destruction of a monetary system that it, it has never been it has never been realized by humans on Earth that we had a global reserve currency that was so flimsy as, as the U.S. dollar, as fiat money in general. But if the U.S. dollar goes, every single unbacked currency will go as well. Yeah, it seems kind of obvious, and people say, well, the renminbi, that'll be the new reserve currency. But if it ain't backed by something, I just don't see it. So... It won't. I mean, yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, the the, the the funny thing is about what's going on with China and the U.S., they know exactly what gold is. They know exactly what unbacked fiat money is. You know, Wen Jiaobo, the premier of China, was in charge of their gold mining before he became premier. And his wife is, is a huge gold bug and gold broker. They know, China knows what gold is and the meaning of gold. So, if they try to back their currency, they wouldn't do it. That means, you know, if if they have global, if globalization continues, countries would cash in their renminbi for gold. And so it's 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 impossible to back a currency. When a, when the currency crashes, you have to go back to the organic solution, which is gold and silver coins used as money. Yeah, I don't see any alternative to it either. And they all know this, but they're all trying to put off the day of reckoning, but eventually you're going to see reverse Gresham's law where the good money pushes out the bad and it's going to happen so fast. Nobody's going to believe it. Will they? That's exactly it. But you know, I think it'll all be kicked off by what's going on in Europe right now. And, and it's the, it's the derivative problem, the weapon of mass financial destruction as Warren Buffett called it, that will destroy all electronic and paper wealth because you know, there's quadrillions, some people say there's over a quintillion, whatever that number is, <laughs> amount of derivatives out there that, you know, J.P. Morgan is the largest derivative holder. And what are they at? 80 trillion derivatives or something completely ridiculous. It doesn't go on their books. One sneeze out of Europe and the whole derivative complex goes, which means every bank would go as well. Yeah, well, I think these derivatives, 
they've actually defaulted on them already because uh, they had the uh, the swaps association you know international swaps dealers association say that uh, that greece didn't default that it was a voluntary transaction and in reality the default took place and it was over but uh, exactly but you know in reality these swaps aren't going to do anybody any good they'll have just been uh, giving people a sense of security that oh these bonds are good because they're insured by a credit default swap or the gamblers who just don't own the underlying security and just buy it as a bet they're all going to get screwed in the end and that's that's the amazing part and i don't think they they are considering it or have given it one bit of thought have they no i i think they know exactly what what the problem is as a matter of fact you know the 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 swap clearing organization or whatever that that entity is that decides whether or not a default has occurred it, our friend over at JP Morgan Blythe Masters is now on that board <laughs> can you imagine that i mean this is this is the woman that created the credit default swap blew it up into the gigantic bubble went to JP Morgan now she runs their commodities division she does all the silver derivatives i mean if you're going to put the the worst person possibly in charge of deciding who wins and who's lo- who loses. They put the one Blythe Masters in charge of that. Yeah, talk about the belly of the beast, huh? That it, it, you, once you go down that path, it is it is ugly in there. What's amazing is that they'll stop at nothing to keep this this system going a little bit longer, a little bit longer. They will really they won't. It'll take. They'll crash companies. They'll crash countries anything they have to to keep the system going and yet in the final analysis it can't work that that's exactly where we are and and i see march is it starting off and you know probably a european problem that you know once it once the ball starts rolling and you're over the cliff you just fall until you hit bottom and and i see it happening for six months or so where you know mass chaos 10 times worse than what happened in 2008. Probably so. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Ron Paul candidacy. Will he be able to carry this out through the convention, or will we have a brokered convention, which to me is looking more and more likely, and that's the way it used to work uh, in the good old days before there was a Federal Reserve, before there was an income tax, before Prohibition. If you remember... um, was it Warren Harding, I believe it was, he got in through a uh, brokered convention. It just, this whole experiment of voting primaries has just been a complete disaster for as long as I can remember. Yeah, I, you know, I think I think this time they're doing it on purpose. They, they, they don't want anybody to run away with the show. That's why Santorum's, you know, everybody's excited about him. It's, he'll have his five minutes in the limelight. But once this monetary crash hits everybody is going to turn to Ron Paul. Yeah, Republicans, yeah. Democrats, Tea Party people, you name it, they're all going to turn to Ron Paul and say, oh my God, you were right, and oh my God, you have an answer for us to get out of this hell. It's just a question of when. Watch for watch for it to begin in March. Yeah, you might be right. I don't like to That's put like it... That's like two weeks away, so get ready. <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah, we're at the middle of February. I forgot all about that. I've been recording so many interviews for the show that I've uh, lost track of all time. It's going to be quite a circus. Uh, you've, been doing a, you've been doing a great job in, in spreading the word about uh, financial clarity <laughs> in, in a world that... <laughs> You know, the mainstream media does their best to, to lie, cheat, and steal and, and keep you in the dark. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to lift the veil, the obfuscation. But it continues, but eventually the truth gets out because you can't you can't lie to people and say there's 8% unemployment when there's 23% unemployment. They know this. They have it figured out. Now, maybe in certain parts of the country that are more prosperous, it's not as obvious, but if you're in Detroit, if you're in St. Louis, if you're in Cleveland, you know, if you're in Cincinnati, if you're in Philadelphia, it's real clear that things are not good, that things are going down, that the economy is contracting, not expanding. But that's for another day, Bix. So we are going to touch base with you. I'm putting you in the calendar for the third week in March, and we're going to do a little post-mortem and see how close we are to the Big Bang. 
That sounds great. All right, man. Hey, it's great to have you on. Just give your website real quick for people who want to find you. Uh, www.roadtoruta.com, uh, or you could just Google Bix Weir and get the 10, 10 million hits of uh, all my stuff that's been plastered all over the world. <laughs> we'll talk to you again soon. You be well. Sounds good, Kerry. Talk to you later.